It's good to meet you guys, Chloe, Katie. We happen to be in the same place at the same time. Chloe, I'd, I'd actually heard of you and your story and thank you for your courage. Thought it would be interesting for you to share in your own words what you went through and to share that with young people across the country so that they're able to understand what you've learned. Yeah, so I'm somebody who went through a gender transition as a minor. I was 12, around the age of 12, when I started experiencing gender dysphoria and feeling that maybe I wasn't a girl. And this whole time, I was actually my mom and dad's son. And I started going through the process of socially transitioning slowly and silently. I never really told anybody until I was a few months in that um, I was identifying as a boy. That um, This is when you were 12? Yeah. I started, I changed my name. Um, I started cutting my hair shorter and I started wearing boys' clothes. And eventually one day I decided that I wanted to let my family know. And I came out to my parents and um, they weren't really sure how to, how to, what to do about this. And so they brought me to therapy expecting that, well, since it's a psychological issue, yep. that surely they would treat it with therapy and that the underlying issues would be resolved, right? Mm -hmm. But instead they were pushed into, into transitioning me. They were told that there was no other option but to transition me. And if I didn't go through transitioning, then I would, surely I would kill myself. The therapist and, said this? Yes. Unbelievable. And so what happened then? They you didn't follow through. Your parents yeah. were confused. They were con they were not only confused, but they were they were scared, scared of losing their kid. They were given the ultimatum of, well, if you don't have a live trans son, then you'll have a dead daughter. And so what did they do then? They let the doctors go through with it. And really the course was pretty much led by me as the patient. I started taking to, I started taking um, puberty blockers and testosterone barely at the age of 13, just six months after being diagnosed with gender dysphoria. And then at 15, the summer after my sophomore year, I underwent a double mastectomy. They removed my breasts. Oh, they did? Yes. I didn't know that part of it. I knew the first part of your story. And when did you come around to the realization that this wasn't necessarily what you wanted? Yeah, um, it wasn't until after the surgery that I started experiencing regret and realizing how transitioning was negatively impacting my life. I realized that socially I was missing out on a lot of things. I, Because I was presenting myself as a boy, I looked like any other boy my age, mm. and I was still attracted to men. So my dating pool was very limited. All my other friends were starting to get into relationships. They were getting their first boyfriends and girlfriends. And I was always the third wheel. I felt very lonely. And just the, the way the male social structure works was something yeah. that I wasn't really equipped for. Nobody had really told me anything. They never, I never, never really had any preparation for it. And I was barely going into that as, as, a, as a 13 year old. I had no idea. And it was really stressful, essentially living a lie. Mm. But the thing that really took me out of it was um, in my junior year of high school, when I was taking a class in psychology, towards the end of the course, I learned about parenting and childhood development. And just learning about all the intricacies that go into raising a child yeah. and the importance of the role of the mother and things like physical affection and breastfeeding. I, it was the first time that I'd really ever thought about anything like that in depth. And I... I realized like this is something that I might not be, might not ever be able mm -hmm. to experience because, because I started these these the treatment, the treatment yeah. treatments so young at the, the age, age of 12, 13. 13. I, I might not be able to naturally mother children, and now that my breasts are gone, I'll never have the option of breastfeeding my children. I'm sorry you went through what you did. I have to say that I admire your courage in sharing your story. Katie, I know you've been through something similar too. Yes, something similar. So I was a little bit older. I was 18 when I started identifying as male and biologically female. And um, when I was 18, I asked everyone in my family, all my friends and everyone to call me by a male name and use male pronouns to refer to me. Um, that's what's known as a social transition. And because I was old enough from the social transition, I went straight into medical transition. Mm. And there was supposed to be, um, I was supposed to have a therapist for six months to be able to sign off on getting testosterone. 
but I ended up not needing that at all because the gender clinic that I went to for my first appointment had a therapist in office and they were able to sign off on the hormones right away and mm -hmm. get me started on testosterone. And then after that, it was the same deal with um, the double mastectomy. I went through and I had top surgery and I had my breasts removed. And you're how old now? 27. And that happened at the age of 18? Yeah, um, 19 when the whole 19. thing really started yeah. with, the, with the medical transition. And then when the double mastectomy didn't feel like it was enough anymore and I had to keep trying to be male, um, I, I had a, a hysterectomy, a total hysterectomy. I had my uterus, ovaries, cervix, and fallopian tubes removed. And actually during that surgery, something went wrong and my artery was left open after mm -hmm. the surgery. So they admitted me to the hospital and they didn't know what was wrong. Um, I just wasn't recovering. And later in the night, they ended up doing an ultrasound and they found that I had been bleeding out internally. And so they rushed me back into- I'm so sorry to, that you went through that. Yeah, That's so they, what happened. they rushed me back into emergency surgery to fix their mistake. And I had oh, three blood transfusions before I was able to leave the hospital. That, I mean, I'm glad that that at least ended a lot that story can end tragically in a lot of ways but what's your perspective i mean i guess if i could ask both of you to be honest with you i'm so grateful for you be willing to share your story i know that's not easy i'm running for u.s president part of my agenda is to protect young people in this country from these new orthodoxies that are spreading across our country what would each of your advice be on how i could do that effectively I think that these treatments need to be banned for people under the age of 18 and for both adults and children who are struggling with gender dysphoria, yeah. the standards of care need to be revised because they're trying to completely remove the age restrictions on these treatments and to allow basically anybody through the system to transition as they please without really any, any previous diagnosis or um, a proper psychological evaluation. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking about doing. I mean, I've gotten a lot of the amount of pushback I've gotten when I've said that actually we would ban these surgeries, really mm -hmm. body altering surgeries and chemical castration and puberty blockers. And I agree with Chloe. You agree with I, that? I agree with her. At the very least, I think it should be completely banned for people under the age of 18. I just don't think that people that young, um, even even over 18 into your 20s. I mm -hmm. mean, it caught me at 18, and I still wasn't able to make the de the proper decision. Um, I think that the whole ideology, gender ideology, is harmful, yeah. and everything it touches, it destroys. Mm -hmm. Based on the just the backlash that I've seen in the world I'm in, I can only imagine what the two of you have been through. What's been the reaction of the LGBTQIA plus community, et cetera, to your stories and you sharing your stories? What's been the reception you've gotten? I mean, from the very beginning of my detransition, just talking about my experience has attracted a lot of hatred from this community that I once was a part of. In what ways does that manifest itself? I mean, um, I've had people harassing me. I've had people even making like different accounts to to like stalk me across my social media on, and I've been told things like, that. "Well, you don't des you don't deserve to." have people care enough about you to let you go th through these treatments. You stole resources from us and you need to stop talking about your story because you're harming the real transgender community. Have you, has it been your experience as well, Katie? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's tough because I don't even want to be on social media because there's just so much negativity around detransitioners saying that we don't deserve support. I I'm so grateful. Courage is important in this country and I hope that even though you went through difficult experiences, I hope that you sharing your story helps kids who were in your the position that you guys were in years ago from having to go through similar kinds of suffering. Thank you so much for Thank you. your courage and your honesty and I wish you guys nothing but the best. Thank and you. if I can be helpful along the way at any point now or in the future, just let me know. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.